Let's take a trip back in time. So strap yourselves in tight. It's time for Bobby and Jason's awesome 80s podcast. Hey, now. Hey. Hey, hey, baby. Jason, are you strapped in? Because that's what she told you to be strapped in. Strap <laughs> in, baby. Well, welcome to Bobby and Jason's awesome 80s podcast. That's Bobby Catalano. And that is Jason Pasco. This is numero 14. Ooh. In English? 14. Number 14. 14. 14. Man, we when are... I was 14 years old, that was a good year. Yeah. Was a good year. You have what a good were you year? doing? It's being 14. I was too. I was riding dirt bikes. Really? Yeah. I never did that. I was. I, I was. did some skateboarding and stuff like that. Yeah. But, wow. And, and I was roller skating. Oh, roller skating. Yeah, well, you guys already know about all that, you, <laughs> you stalkers. So look, let's recap. Number 13, we had the beautiful babe. Diane Franklin. And wasn't she, everybody out there, wasn't she great? She just shared so much stuff. She did. She, um, she's just a natural and she's so sweet. Like she's just a genuine person. You could, and you could really tell that when coming through right there. And not only that, but how thoughtful she was about stuff. Like she, how, she really was. how she shared real deal stuff. You know, how, what, I, yeah. you, know what, you know what I thought was nice? How she, um, her first paycheck that she bought her mom, that, that dryer. You know, she was yeah. thinking of her family first. Family first, yeah. And she's just, yeah, I think she's like American sweetheart. She really is. And the way she talked about her daughter and all the stuff that her daughter's doing, I'm looking forward to seeing some of that. Yep, and she has another book that she's that she's working on. She said it's coming out later this month. And if you haven't picked up her first book, I put the link on the Facebook page, and it's called The Excellent Adventures of the Last American French Exchange Babe of the 80s. That's one hell of a title. <laughs> yeah, but it gets all the points across. It really does. So yeah, if you haven't picked up her book, I suggest you do. It's a real easy read and it's fun. You can also check it out. We put a link over on the uh, website. So we got a link to the website and if you aren't following her on Twitter, follow her on Twitter because there's a lot of cool stuff going on. Yep. She's got that whole, um, that 80s in the sand event next year and that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be talking more about that later. Yeah, we're we're actually thinking about that. So who yeah. knows? Yeah. yeah. Um, also, see, this is what's really cool is uh, we're going to welcome all the new listeners who came through. We got a lot of new people uh, contacting us who, you know, Diane Franklin fans that didn't know about our little garage podcast here. Yeah, man, we're growing each week. And uh, Rose Franklin, our big fan, she said, you guys have moved up to a double garage i don't know about all that yet we're getting double, there baby <laughs> we're getting there <laughs> but uh another interesting thing that happened with this was that uh we actually did another interview already with somebody we did we got in touch with us uh somebody you, everybody's gonna know exactly who he is exactly. and his time of the season's coming around right now christmas time there's, right? there's a little hint <laughs> there's a little hint so stay tuned that that's going to be um episode number 15 next week and how do we say that in the in that language of yours um numero quince Ooh, numero quince so you thought you had me on the I spot I did you? you actually gave me a look there for so you like, didn't shit, see it but shit, when i threw it at him <laughs> he looked at me for a second and i was like oh you might not get it so wait a second so let me uh open this up here a little bit uh it's time for that awesome part of the show Called Bobby's Glitches. Wait, wait, wait. There, there were no glitches. Yes, there was. What was what glitch? You know exactly what I'm talking <laughs> I'll about. Try, I just, tried to play oh, stupid. Really did. <laughs> and I want to thank whoever caught that. I'm sorry. I was stalking oh, the man. Facebook page, but didn't. And I caught it too when he said it. And I didn't say anything. And I'm thinking to myself, our listeners are smart savvy and particular and they they're gonna sure find are. Us. they sure are sure they they you can't pull the rug out of these people <laughs> man. so go ahead what was it it was melody and i should have said melanie exactly but you know what i listened to it again i said melody the first time the second time i got it right i said melanie but still you know what i don't think melanie cares i don't think she cares melanie, either if you if it bothered you that i screwed up your name tell me but I, <laughs> I don't think but, she will. But I got pleasure out of it, and I want to thank our everybody out there in listener land for the help. I appreciate that. I love you. All right, bro. I got some sad news. Oh, God. We hate sad news here at the podcast. But we are, you know, equal opportunity, <sighs> you know. So, anybody, have you ever heard of Carnegie Deli? I've been to Carnegie Deli. In New York. In New York and? 
and there's one in Vegas. Yep. Well, the one in New York, which opened in 1937, is closing its doors at the end of the year, man. What yeah, the hell would man. they do that for? I think they want to get more involved in just franchising and... and but why would you get rid of the original? I mean, that's like a pilgrimage place. I know, place. man. It's on 7th Avenue and 55th. And yeah, it's where it all started. One thing about Carnegie, if you know, their sandwiches are legendary in size. Oh, God, yeah. You know, the, yeah. it's just... I don't know if one sandwich could feed a family of four. <laughs> I remember going with my father once to Carnegie Deli here in that, the Mirage in Las Vegas. And he ordered a sandwich and I ordered something else. It wasn't a sandwich. I got a dessert or something. And I was looking at him like, Dad, you going to eat that? And of course he did. And he ate half and he took the other half to his room. <laughs> I think that happens smart often. Man. <laughs> Mr. Catalano, smart man. Yeah, but that's a shame. Dar Carnegie Deli is like one of those exact pil pilgrimage places. And, right. and the thing about here at the Mirage is they got it right. Yeah, they it's do. It's right. They, I wouldn't think if they're going to franchise this thing different places. Like, Well, it's around. There's a few more. I think there's another one in New York City. But the original is unfortunately going away. Um, you know, you know what else is an, something that went away last year? Them, do you remember FEO Sports, the yeah. toy store? Yeah, it was featured in Big, in big Tom yeah. Hanks. Piano. Well, that that place closed its doors, and I always remember when I would go on auditions for my acting, or if I was just in New York hanging out, I always made a stop in FEO Sports because it was like a kid's playground, bro. Mm, I think Amazing. I've only been there once, but yeah, and that that yeah. really made me sad. I'm gonna. I'm going to cry. He's going to cry. Oh, God. I encourage everyone to send tissues to the because podcast. one thing about me, I love my toys. Yes, you do. And one day, everybody will see that. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> you are the biggest kid ever. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's what makes him fun. So, but yeah, FAO Sports, so things moving on, you know, everything on the internet. Yeah, and things change, man. Well, you know what? Thank God for the inter internet, because if not, you and I would never be able to do anything like this. It's true. I want to give him another hint. You want to give him another hint for yeah, our special next guest next week? Yes, our next celebrity guest. Here All we right. go. Let's let's hear it. I can't put my arms down. I can't put my arms down. <laughs> <laughs> is that too much? Um, no, I mean I know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course I do. I'm just saying, you know, from, from, it, from it's, that time frame. You know? It's it's it's, it's going to be fun. <laughs> okay, exactly. Yeah, it's going to be la laid back. It's cool. So, did, did you have a... Somebody wrote, wrote yes, in with a question. it's that time. Dun, 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 oh, shit. Dun, 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 dun. Come on, you got a big part in this. Oh, this it's important. that time. You make this part. It's that time it's again. The show. The show. Come on. The show. <laughs> <laughs> scaring the kids oh man well it's Halloween coming up yeah okay well we got a question I can't remember I don't have it in front of me I can be a little unprepared for this um, they asked why don't we talk about Wham and what are our feelings on George Michael today when we look back at it and think about it why I mean that's about that, I don't know it just hasn't come up I mean we probably should have we do, I think we have I mean yeah we, we've done a little bit I mean yeah Wham and George Michael or a big influence on us as teenagers, of course. Yeah. I mean, that was, they. we were kind of hand in hand with them as far as why people remember us. Everywhere we went, everyone we talked to, most people who came on the show would always ask us about Wham, when are we going to do another lip sync? Right. It was just... Yeah, yeah man, they, they were big stars. I think that um, when they released uh, Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, the video, I think MTV really turned in them turned them into superstars. Oh, yeah. You know, they were singing before that, but mm. but I don't think they were on that level when, you know, they were on Madonna's level at one time. D they were, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, they were that like was, a super group. And, and George was really smart when he left. He went out on top and he did the whole Faith record, which was just the 80s I mean, right there. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, I don't know if you realize, but George Michael writes everything. Yeah. He's very talented. I mean, singer, obviously, but he's a writer, producer, and that's one thing I love about writers and producers. You're getting the full them. That's the full George. It's not like he's, you know, doing his whole, doing, having somebody else come in and write stuff. You're just basically singing their song, what, trying to make it your own. What was one of your favorite singles from Make It Big, that, that album? Well, Freedom. All Freedom. the ones that we did. Freedom yeah. was great. Um, Careless Whispers. Careless Whisper was great. Did, just, did, did, did you see the Careless Whispers lip sync that your buddy did? 
Who? Your buddy. You? <laughs> yeah, your buddy. <laughs> What the hell are you doing? It just freaked me out. I, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know, man. Brain Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Because you don't fucking share the video. <laughs> I can't. What the hell's wrong with you? It's part of my childhood. Darth Vader won't allow it. Oh, man. Come uh, on. Uh, fight the pole. You got to fight the pole on that thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, man, that, that Mega Pig album was great, but he, the next one was great also. The Faith. What was the album called, Faith? No, that was when he went solo. Look at you and your George Michael. Listen to that, everybody. <laughs> Mr. George Michael doesn't remember no, when the Edge of Heaven record that came out. Oh, shit. <laughs> Did we do Edge of Heaven? This yeah. is great. I'm just playing stupid. <laughs> this is no, yeah, exactly. You know what's so great about him? He's like a pro actor at playing stupid. He is like fucking <laughs> Mar the Marlon Brando of playing stupid. <laughs> I just got cast to play in Dumb and Dumber and Dumbest. Mark, yeah, ing, yeah, bird, yeah, 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 mockingbird, don't everybody have you heard, have you heard? she's gonna buy she's gonna me buy a mockingbird, and, and if that mockingbird don't sing, don't sing, she's gonna buy she's me a diamond ring, and if that diamond ring don't shine, Look, there's some people want to ride too. Pick them up. <laughs> Yo, so here, I got something for you. It's in the news actually today. Okay. About George. Okay. Mr. Michael. Um, do you remember the video Freedom 90? Oh, great video. Cindy Crawford. Cindy Crawford was in it. Christy Turlington and Noemi, Noemi Campbell, right? Na Naomi Campbell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they recently redid it. Vogue put together models of today. Because you remember, George wasn't in the video. Yeah. He, um, he was he protesting because of the Sony thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So all the models lip synced Freedom 90 for him. Mm -hmm. And it was actually kind of cool. Yeah, and fair. people remember it. So anyway, they added Andrea Lima, Joan Smalls, and Taylor Hill. Just a few. I haven't seen this. No, it's brand new. It's actually online. So if you haven't checked it out, Google Freedom 90. Um, Vogue put it together. Vogue magazine. And... It's pretty interesting. Hey, what was your favorite song off the Listen to Prejudice album? Prank, was it Prank for Time? Was yes, that, that was my favorite one too. That, is, that, that song, song was so deep and I don't know, man, you hear it, you're like, you have a lot of emotions when you hear that song. Yeah. You, and you George, know. George wrote his ass off on that, on those out, on that album. Yeah. And he did. So anyway, there's our little show moment there's and our, our little wham moment. moment. And Jason had a big brain fart and Bobby, <laughs> Bobby was actually very perfect that's right bobby was perfect in his brando <laughs> we are going to call this podcast bobby and jason's dumb and dumber podcast that's right no, bobby and jason's dumbest podcast <laughs> so i haven't asked you this over the vacation and whatnot have you have you seen ghostbusters the new one have you seen it i haven't good have you no i haven't you know i haven't wait jason's boycotting this film well i'm boycotting all this stupid shit it's basically it <laughs> You know, I already went on a rant, so if anybody wants to dial it back, you guys have got hours and hours and hours of yeah, classic Bobby and Jason for that. talking about I'm, shit. I'm not against the film. I just haven't had time. I'm going to end up seeing it on DVD or something. You're going to waste two hours of your I'm life. I'm going to waste it. two hours of your time because you're going to watch oh, it. You think with so, me. huh? Somebody you better are. be supplying the, the alcohol, <laughs> the, the, the sandwiches from, you know, the, the Mirage that we were just talking about. Uh, the deli, man. The, the deli. deli. And some other good stuff, man, if you're going to get me to watch that. Because, you know, <laughs> a lot of these things, one of the things that I thought was interesting with, not, with Gene Wilder, this isn't interesting, the wrong phraseology there. But um, when he was, he, I saw this interview, you can probably, you can find it on YouTube, where he was talking about Willy Wonka and he was asked about the remakes just had me thinking about this. I was right. feeling a little nostalgic the other yeah, Tim night Burton, watching it. Tim Burton made it. Yeah, and he said he really didn't like that actor, and he thought it was wrong, well, the whole Johnny, movie. Well, Johnny Depp played the part. Yeah, and um, it was Tim Burton's vision, though. Yeah, yeah, and Johnny Depp's one of his favorites. Yeah, yeah. man, it, it, it missed. It did miss. I, I saw it, and it was just way over the top for me. I, You know, I can't even, it doesn't even compare and to see, to, act, to see, actually see Gene Wilder come out and say, he didn't like, he actually said, I don't like that director. That says a lot. Yeah. But speaking of Tim Burton, oh. he, he's actually trending this week. 
Oh, so you got look you at got, me. I'm on point. Yo, go are, me. Pat man. on the back. Go me. So yeah, Tim Burton, big '80s director, writer. He um did Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Great movie. That's so funny, man. Yeah. Um, he did Beetlejuice, of course. Beetlejuice. 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 He did Batman with um <laughs> I'm Batman. Our, one of our favorites, Michael Keaton. I'm Batman. And of course, he did Edward Scissorhands with his one of his favorite actors, Johnny Depp. Yes. So anyway, here's the deal. This is why he was trending. He had a movie that just opened up last weekend called Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I can't believe you got all those words I right. I got Good it right. Job. And this movie actually opened up at number one. It made a lot of money. Wow. Was but it a kid's movie? It's kind of like a fantasy type film, which Tim Burton does a lot of. But that's not why he's trending. Mm, why? It's because um, he's getting criticized for not having diversity in his films. Whoa. Yeah, he... Basically, if you look back on his career, you'll notice that most of the cast is is white. And that that is true. Do you know something? And this isn't meaning to make me sound insensitive or anything, but I just never noticed. I was, I guess I was just engrossed when I watch his movies. Yeah, most movies, I'm engrossed in the story. Right. Like, I'll notice if there's a really good actor... You know what I mean? Like, wow. And, and they slip into a role like John, watching Johnny Depp, him being a great actor. You first, you, when you first see him on screen, you're like, oh, there's Johnny Depp. And then you're like, okay, now he's the Mad Hatter or whoever he is. He right. loses himself in the role. So watching these things, it's very interesting you bring this up because it, it's, I just never noticed. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I didn't notice either, but you know, there's a lot of people, he's getting slammed pretty, pretty badly on, wow. on Twitter and Facebook and all, you know, all the social networks and some news articles came out and he actually commented on it and he said, you know, he, he, he stuck to his guns basically, you know, he's not, I guess he, he's not necessarily a politically correct guy. Oh God, him, Tim Burton, not so, at all. You know, he, his vision for his films, he's very into fantasy and very, very unique kind of director. Um, so the way his mind works, I don't think that he does it purposely. At all. I think he just gets the right person in his head, right. in Tim Burton land, for that particular role. Right. I right. don't think he's actually thinking to himself, I need this type of person or that type of person. Right. He's got it in his head. Yeah, but today's that's world, what it is. unfortunately, this is yeah. the way it is. Now, Samuel L. Jackson is actually starring in this new film. He's got a great, he's got a great beer. Samuel Jackson, it's my beer. Yes, they deserve to die, and I hope they burn in hell. <laughs> He's awesome. Yeah. Samuel's awesome. But Samuel stuck up for Tim Burton and, and actually said positive things about him. Go, Sam. So, I don't know. I don't know what everyone out there thinks about it. You can comment on the Facebook page. But I just wanted to bring that up. Tim Burton is trending, and uh, his film's doing well. What do you got as far as a... You got a, you got a favorite Tim Burton film? Um... For the 80s, I would say Beetlejuice Oh, is yeah, that's it. My that's exactly, see, I don't know why you and I are on the same wavelength today with Praying for Time and uh, Beetlejuice, but there you go. Yeah. And I did enjoy Pee-wee's Big Adventure. I mean, remember remember that bike? <laughs> I remember being young. as like, yeah, man, that bike's cool. I need a bike like that. You know? did, did your dad get you one like he got you he, the he did not. smoking the bandit car? He did not. But speaking <laughs> of that bike, I saw a guy a couple weeks ago on the Las Vegas Strip it's big right. surprise! Big surprise there. Yes. He had the bike. He had the outfit. He had the whole look. He even talked like Pee Wee, and it was it was great. He looked great. He's making cash for pictures right he there. Was taking pics for tips. So listen, peeps, if you come to Vegas and you see these characters and you do take pictures, they're not doing that out of the grace of their heart. They not at want all. Tips. They want money. And <laughs> if you do come to Vegas and you do take pictures with them, send them to us. We'll oh, put them man. up on the site. We'll definitely post we'll those. We'll post them. But we love yeah, anything you guys want to talk about with Vegas and whatnot. Joe, please just send them out to us. G we'll give be me more your, happy. Give me, give me your best Beetlejuice three oh. times. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. See, I can't do it like you. <laughs> Let me try. Go ahead. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. That's pretty good. Pretty good. And oh wait, now you got to ask me the question. Can I do Bob doing Beetlejuice? Here we go. <clears throat> Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, <laughs> Beetlejuice. What do you think? That was great. Thanks, pal. You know, you, you do very good imitations. I, I really appreciate it, Bob. I really, really do. Uh, you sound very <laughs> like Tom Hanks there. Thank you. <laughs> He's a grumpy one, that guy. 
Okay, okay buddy, it is that time. It's time for someone who's definitely not grumpy. He's never grumpy. He's always happy. He's like happy as a button. Let's roll some of that music first. <laughs> it's, it is that moment with Marlon Mondow. What's up, little buddy? What's going hey, on? Hey there. Hi there. Ho there. What's well, up, brothers? We're good. We missed you last week because we had Diane Franklin. In, mm. Yeah, yeah. On the that's podcast. Okay. I, I, I really wish I was there, but I was a little busy. But uh, I got to tell you, it was a fantastic uh, interview, guys. Thank did you, you. Did you like it? I did. I did. I, I really hope that uh, we, we get, you know, more celebrities in the future. That'd be great. But that was an awesome, awesome uh, interview. Oh, trust me. That is definitely going to happen. Yeah, definitely. We definitely are. So what, tell us some of your memories of some of her movies, Diane's movies from the 80s. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna just jump right on to uh, Last American Virgin. That that was uh, a mind blowing film back in the day. Um, I remember, you know, at school, you know, everybody went to go see that film, and it was such a I don't know. It was like a an honest, you know, take on real life in a sense, and how everything is a has a twist in life. You know what I mean? And, right. I, and you know, that movie really, I thought you know, hit home and it was more believable than not. Yeah. You know that, what I mean? that was so. exactly what it was like. I mean, that's a snapshot of exactly that happened all the time. Right. right. There. What did you think? What did you think the first time you saw the ending? Was it a shock? Oh my gosh. It was, it was pretty much, uh, you know, the first time in any film that really hits you with a sledgehammer at the end right. because it was, it was so shocking. You didn't see that happening. You thought to yourself, right? You know, he's gonna he's gonna get the girl, and you know, it's gonna be roses, and you know, and we're all gonna walk out of the theater, <laughs> you know, with the happy ending. And it was like, whoa, what was that? Exactly. But it was like I said, it was such a it was such a an honest of how life is. You know, life is is not always roses. You know what I mean? And, right. You know, it's it, sometimes it's black roses. So I thought to myself and a lot of my friends at the time was like, hey, we want to go see that again. Did we just believe what happened? Yeah, so it, was, it was really cool. It was a great movie. I mean, it was funny, too. I mean, there was some funny. Those guys were going through some shit in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> that scene. Absolutely. Remember when they, when they went in the pharmacy and they were trying to tell the guy the problem they had without telling him? Yeah. <laughs> and they're itching and everything. That shit was jokes. And yeah, the, yeah. And the fact you know, that you... It, and also, I like the, uh, uh, I guess, the older woman scenario. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> you know, so guys, I think that was kind of a, you know, a young teenage guy's, uh, you know, number one fantasy at that time. So um, so that was really cool, too. It was very funny, you know, them coming and going out of the house and stuff like that. But what a great film, man. And it, it was really, it wasn't interesting hearing her actually explain all of it, too, and, and break it down from yeah, the inside. Right. Yeah, that, that was really cool because, you, you, like you said, you you can never research everything that is done in film and, you know, and how things are done. So it was great to hear from her to, you know, give you just an honest portrayal of, you know, what it was. So that was really cool. So um, what did you bring this week? I know you're always doing your homework. Yeah, you're always on yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I came up, uh, you know, with an article uh, that I uh, saw last night while uh, doing a little reading, and um, you know, it, you know, I'm I'm a big, huge fan of film. Uh, you know, like I know Bobby, you are, and you know, movies mean a lot to us. And uh, there was this particular article talking about Hollywood duels, and what I mean by Hollywood duels, I mean like the actor director relationship, and right. you know, you know how some actors and directors have this great relationship and success of right. working together multiple times. It's, it's um, funny that you bring that up. We talked about Tim Burton earlier. And yeah, oh, he, okay. Of course, Tim Burton and Johnny Depp, they're... They're joined at the hip, these yeah. guys. And and that's actually on my list. Oh, I didn't they know that. Together <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's ironic. Yeah, they worked together eight times. I mean, just wow! I didn't, know. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize it was that many. Yeah, um, you know, they're pretty much, you know, what you call a terror twins. So you know, they do a lot <laughs> of really interesting things. Oh yes. And uh, it's always, it's always been my dream uh, as an actor to, you know, hopefully one day, still in the future, find a director that he and I see eye to eye on how everything right. is going to be done. Mm. And uh, Tim Burton and Johnny Depp just, you know, 
continue to have this great success together, not just, you know, from an artistic standpoint, but commercial success also. Right. Um, so they're on my list. Also on my list was uh, Steven Spielberg and Harrison Ford. Um, oh, yeah. oh you know, good point. Good catch on that. Yeah. Yeah. These guys have been together for a lot of times with the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, I love you know, Last movies. Crusade, mm. Temple of Doom. They've done a lot of great things with the Indiana Jones series. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, I believe they're doing another one in the future, but I've seen all of those. In wait, the wait, theater. wait, they're doing another Indiana. Yeah. That was part of yeah. his, that is, was part of his deal with is, the two, uh, is Indiana going to be in a wheelchair? I don't know. Well, you know, usually what they do is they get, always get a young, younger Indiana Jones. Oh, okay. And maybe did, it'll be a, uh, remember, um, you know, R- River Phoenix did that. He played a young yeah, Indiana. Yeah. yeah, but they they played a young Indiana, but then they tried it with the Crystal Skull, which was just a clusterfuck all the way around. Yeah, that movie. yeah I remember yeah, that. Yeah, with uh, yeah. Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some things work, some things don't. You know, what are you going to do? But they they have had successful movies in the past, uh, a great relationship, combo, actor, director. Without a uh, doubt. Another on my list is... Uh, Spike Lee and Denzel Washington. Um, oh, yeah. They've done mm-hmm. four films together. You you know, you, Bobby, I don't know if you remember, you and I went to go see Michael, Malcolm X yes. a long time ago in a theater. We saw that in Philly. We did. And, um, you know, they've done some great stuff together. Uh, Inside Man is one of my favorites. I uh, had that. a great twist at the end. Um, you know, uh, you know, pretty much a bank robbery film. And uh, was, you know, um, I love those guys work together. Was Clive Owens in Inside Man? I so. Clive, yes, sir. Clive Owens was the guy. Uh, he was the uh, he was the alleged bad guy. Yeah, and bro. I that too much of that away. That script was very original. That was an original script. It was great. It was done uh, at uh, Wall Street, you know, in New York. You know what I mean? They like right. you know mapped that all out and did that down there. Um, so hopefully, you know, they left that with a twist. Hopefully, they'll do a Inside Man two. Oh, that would be uh, great. And another on my list, and I know this is going to be uh, one of, uh, you know, Bobby, one of your favorites, uh, Quentin Tarantino and Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, man. Yeah, those two. <laughs> you, Quentin is so different. Like, his style, he's amazing. He, he is amazing. And some strange way, he always happened to find a spot for Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel's uh, the man. He, hey, if you can get Samuel L. Jackson, you find a spot for him wherever you can. Yeah. All Samuel L. If Samuel just stands there, his presence is like right. enough. Exactly, yeah, you nailed it. And, and you know, one of my favorite, there's, you know, I love Pulp Fiction, but Django Unchained was my favorite for Samuel Jackson performance. Yeah, he, he was, was great. such a, he was <laughs> such an evil guy in that. You know, you don't really get to see Samuel do that too much. Right. Um, but uh, what a great, great combination those guys are. And then my final and last, and uh, I know my man Bobby's going to agree with this 110%. Uh, Marty Scorsese and Robert De Niro. Oh man! Oh well, yeah! That duo wow. is unreal. Unreal. I mean, you know, Bob, I've known you for a lot of years, and you know, we agree on some things and some things we don't, but we definitely agree that Martin Scorsese and De Niro together is a, it's, it's, it's magic. A, it's a welcome trip it's, to the movies. It's magic. Yeah, they they totally nail it exactly. You know, there's it, no one else that can get his vision across Marty's vision than uh. Bobby. Yeah, those guys are really, really joined at the hip. I, you know, from I mean, my favorite is, is always going to be Taxi Driver. I remember as a kid, um, that was one of the first movies I saw when I was about twelve years old, and I knew I wanted to be an actor right. after I saw you know uh, this movie. And it was great because Martin Scorsese actually plays a small part in Taxi Driver. Yep. Uh, and that's always a trip to see. It's always it means it's so special to me to see when he's he finds a little hole in the film to put himself in, and uh, yeah, you know, Taxi that. Driver is always going to be my favorite. It 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 is. It's one of my favorites too. Um, it's definitely when De Niro was a lot younger, and he always had the talent even at that age. He was amazing. He was right, born to yeah. he was born to be. He Robert really was. De Niro. And, you know, he won an Oscar with uh, Scorsese also with, of course, Raging Bull. Um, you know, you can't really put the icing on a cake uh, in a relationship actor-director duel when you guys bring home the Oscar. So uh, yeah. I got to give it up to Martin Scorsese and my man, my favorite, Robert De Niro. 
We love oh, Mr. De Niro. Love, it. love what Bo- you brought. He's got a great first name, Bobby De Niro. Yeah, it's, it's all right. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> hey, bro, speaking of favorite actors, duels, you know Al Pacino's coming to Vegas in about oh. two weeks. And what's what's this all about? He's going to be doing a one-man show. Do you remember two years ago I saw him at the Mirage? Absolutely, Well, yeah. he's repeating that show um, in a few weeks. So, yeah, man, what a great time just to listen to Pacino talk about his career. It's yeah, just, yeah, he one, just goes up there and talks. Hey, Bobby, why don't you tell the audience about that? I mean, what was that about? How, how did that go? It was great. He just basically, there was a chair there. Al Pacino sat there, spotlight on him, full room. Um, he went through his career from the beginning, you know, worked his way to today. He even did question and answers with the audience. I got in line. This is funny. I was in line to ask him a question. I was going to ask him about working with De Niro. Right. And I was the next person to ask, and they cut it off. Right. So I got got fucked. I got fucked. You were close, though. I got close. I got robbed. (laughs) I got robbed. (laughs) Hey, hey, Jason, you know what's really funny about that is – you know, Bobby was texting me while this was going on, and he was so <laughs> he was so excited. He's like, "Dude, I'm about to I ask Al Pacino a question," and uh, and then he got passed. He's the on. guy who got like, screwed. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, man. man, I got left at the altar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> All right, brother, it was good to talk to you. Great man. to talk to you. Pleasure, brought man. great stuff, man. The moment with Marlon. Moment with Marlon. We Cue the music. You. We love you, homie. All okay, right, guys, take care. Take it talk easy. To you soon. Dad always loved talking to Marlon. Always. The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. The Marlon. Mr. Dow. Oh. <laughs> so I gotta tell you. You know what? Talking about that Carnegie's made me hungry. Well, that's what I just said. I gotta tell you. Oh. You well, know, I didn't know that. You just said I gotta tell you. You didn't let me finish. So I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the thing is, folks, I'm always interrupted here. I never <laughs> could get I never could get a word in. <laughs> It's Jason talking, Alf's talking. Everybody's got to talk. Can I talk? Please. Please yeah. do. You, okay. you, you see what he did there, everybody, right? I'm being very sensitive. Yes, you are sensitive. Anyway, so I went to an Italian restaurant in Caesars called Carmine's. Mm. Carmine's is also in Atlantic City at the Tropicana. So oh, I'd say I knew this. You just said that. I've been yeah. to one in D.C. Exactly. So the people back east, you can try it out if you haven't. I highly recommend it. They have a shrimp cocktail. That is the best shrimp cocktail I've ever had in my life. And I am a professional shrimp guy. (laughs) You know what I mean? I really am. And I also had some chicken parm, which is really good. Mm -hmm. And rigatoni's with marinara sauce and meatballs. Oh, man, you just housed it. We did. I went with a couple friends, and it's family style. So That's the best way. Yeah, they give you big portions. Everybody shares. It's kind of like being Sunday uh, dinner, you know, in South Philly with the Italian family, and it feels like that, but it's real authentic. And it's in the Mirage, huh? No, it's in Caesar's Palace in the Forum Shops. Okay, all right. So, if anybody's visiting Vegas and you want a good Italian meal, go check it out. Carmine, see, see you like this, everybody out there? We give you our little Vegas I feel tips. Like I for just food. did a commercial for Carmine. Just, and I, <laughs> they should give me some free shrimp or something. They bring this in. Get ourselves Shit. some free eggplant parmesan. Sounds good. You got one, right? I got one, what? You said you want somewhere to eat. Oh, yeah. Well, Norris. Norris. See, now, I, I like a little more of the off strip sometimes, you know, uh, because, you know, as we, people that we know that come out, and sometimes we have to right. give guided tours and whatnot. But a um, place called Norris, it's one of those authentic places. That, Where you know, is it? It's up in the, it's up like in the north northeast. Okay, so know it's exactly nowhere where, near the strip. It's nowhere near the strip. Okay. And th- that's great because out here in Vegas, people have come from everywhere else. So when you're getting right. Italian food or you're getting Mexican food, it is like authentic and just delicious. Yeah. So there's some good stuff out here. You got to try Carmine's. Got to try that. Thanks, bud. Yeah, bro. All this Italian food talk is making me hungry. I think as soon as this podcast is over, I'm going to make some raviolis and I'm not going to share. That's fine. I don't want anything you're going to make anyway. Share. Are you kidding me? I don't want anything you're making. Maybe I'll give Harley, the Frenchie, a few <laughs> Yeah, because that's about <laughs> as good as you can cook. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Sorry, I'll take a shot. So I have some Facebook comments. Ooh, the good stuff. Yeah, Let's man. Let's see what is, we got. And these, I have three, and these are all new listeners. We new, got a lot of new listeners new this beeps. week. 
We love to see new peeps. So yeah, not keep, that we don't love the old peeps. We well, love, you know, not old peeps. You know what I'm. You know what I'm saying. Nobody's old. Yes. Well, maybe. <laughs> anyway, first comment is from Lucky Casas. I love that name, Lucky. Isn't that like a lucky house? It is Lucky Casas. Nice. Maybe it's not her real name, but anyway, <laughs> she wrote. I just watched a last American Virgin Tuesday on my fire stick. Oh, the memories still can't believe she did Gary dirty like that. Me either. I can't believe it. Poor Gary. I'm, I'm still upset about it. <laughs> That's something he said. <laughs> so I was like telling <laughs> Diane, I feel bad for Gary. <laughs> and she says, that was a great podcast. She was so perky. Yeah, yeah, she great. Was. She was perky. I just think that's how she is in everyday life. I think so She's too. She's just a cool chick. Got another one. Andy Monroe. She says, I watched Last American Virgin so many times, and it always made me cry when Karen doesn't go for poor Gary. Everybody's feeling bad for poor Gary. Poor Gary. I mean, Gary, Gary, Gary. Maybe we can get Gary on the show and he can tell us his side. <laughs> we actually should. Yeah, we should. We'll, we'll try and do that. Yeah. She says, Diane Franklin is still beautiful after all these years. She's awesome. Loved the podcast. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Andy. And this is another new listener. Her name is Brandy, and I'm definitely going to get this wrong. Come on. Kozinski. Ooh, there's a, there's a lot going so, on in that one. Yeah, Brandy, I hope I <laughs> did it okay. She says, so I'm sitting in a local restaurant, and somebody played Dirty Deeds by Joan Jett. She says, I immediately thought of Cindy Stark. Cindy Stark. And for those of you who don't know who Cindy Stark is, Cindy Stark was a dancer on the show. The back, show. Back in the day. And really bubbly, happy girl, good friend of ours. You know, here's something you probably don't remember. I did a lip sync with her. Did you? Where she did Light of Day from uh, Michael J. Fox, that Michael J. Fox movie. Right. Yeah, so she was uh, Joan Jett, and I was Michael J. Fox, and it was just her and I. And we did Light of Day, and we rehearsed it at the old rehearsing room back oh, at the okay. Pasco Ranch. There you go. Yeah. She's, so, she's always interesting chick. I always liked Cindy. Me too. I always liked her too. Really? She was real. Very she real. She really was. Down the earth, real nice. I went through her house a few times. Her mom and dad cooked for me at dinner, and just always were friendly. Yeah, very cool. So what do you have? You have an email? I've got it. You want to do the email bag this time? Do the email bag song. Come on. Give me, give me a start. Da 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 da. Email bag. Got the da, da, email bag. Email bag. I like that. We're using that one. That was horrible. That was fantastical. Okay, here we go. This is from Raina McAdams. See, look at thank you. I got such a good name that I I can just say. Yeah, yeah. Dear Bobby and Jason, your Diane Franklin interview was great. The ending to Last American Virgin makes so much more sense. My husband and I actually rewatched the movie, and it's impossible not to love her after hearing her talk. What an awesome surprise. Well, we're glad you liked it. <laughs> I listen to your podcast every Thursday at the gym, and I get looks when I bust out laughing. I'm sure that's not the only thing you're getting looks for. <laughs> you guys are funny. Bobby, I see that you have a French bulldog. I have one too. I do. Can you post more pictures of her? I will. I will. Harley the Frenchie. Jason, do you have a dog? Yes, I do. I have a pug named Sammy. Cute dog. Yes, cute. He's, he's, he looks really old, though. You know, when you first get a pug, you know, you think they're going to be like that forever. <laughs> One thing I noticed, Sammy's uh, well fed. Sammy is, <laughs> Sammy is <laughs> very, very stout. <laughs> Let's put it that way. He's a stout dog. Whereas your dog, this French bulldog is nothing but like a... He's just like a quadricep. He's nothing it's but like, muscle. She's like a little Mike Tyson. Yeah, and her she's got that big old head, and she just is. She's just, great. Wow, she's awesome. But my my dog is just. It's a cutie, man. Yeah, and he's, he's he's seven, and he looks like he's fifty. So uh, there you go. You can see that not only am I a lover of Bobby and Jason's awesome podcast, but adorable doggies too. Well, love you guys, Raina. Raina, thank Raina. you, Raina. Thank you, Raina. That was awesome, man. I that's that, great. That was great. I'm definitely going to post a picture of, of Frenchie, my Frenchie. There you go. Harley. Yeah. Her name is it's, Harley. Listen, he's such a big, he loves this dog. It's just like so funny to say. It's great. Though. It's funny. You're sometimes, a good, you're a good dog. I, I, I do. I love her. Sometimes I'm working on my computer and she looks at me with them little puppy eyes. And mm -hmm. that means 
please, daddy, pick me up, put me on your lap. And then she just plops herself on my lap, all 30 pounds of her. All it's right. great. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've come to that time. All right, Jason. listen, we had such a great show. Wasn't this great? It was. We had it was, fun. It just flew we by. Did. It just flew by. But sadly, it's over. Well, first, before we get over, we want to thank all our new listeners and everybody who signed up on social media and sent us emails and whatnot. Yes. You are in for a wild ride. You guys rock and definitely check out our YouTube channel. It's going to start to grow. It's going to start to grow. So, yeah, so check it out. We got a lot of cool stuff. And next week, special guest. Special guest, Fred Gile. <laughs> That's that one. Good. I like it. You like that? So, this podcast is self destruct in five. five. Four, three, two, one. Oh. See you later, everybody. Take it easy, everybody. Tell me.